So that this has been absolutely awesome. Yeah, th thank you for taking this on with me. I really appreciate it. This has been like something that really, like I really was so happy to, to do this and I looked forward to it every week and I learned an immense amount and I'm like so excited. I mean, I feel like he, he really, really dug into the method, you know, with your help. So that was very illuminating, very, very illuminating. It was, it was just great to see everything. You know, I was certainly pleased to have the answers in advance of things that I needed and answers in the moment and also to have that opportunity to show you what I was telling you in the beginning, yeah. which was seminars give you a foot in the door, but what they don't give you the ability to do is have the right person with you on the most challenging moment of your most challenging lesson. Right. And fortunately, a handful of times, we were there together for those moments. But in the moment that you needed the right thing, I was right there. And I feel like you are very, very empowered with that. However, there's still so many more bumps in the road that we want to get through together, right. just like they would be in traditional lessons, because this is a traditional curriculum right. in a uniquely user-friendly language. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. And I, I just like, I have to tell you, like I've said it a few times, but if you had seen him early on, like how many motor planning problems there were, like he has improved dramatically for his fine motor skills. It's just incredible. And mm. I love, I love my favorite part of this is when you see, you can sort of see the wheels spinning and the fingers reaching. And it's like, wow, that's like so cool. Because in other, I feel like in other things when I was adapting like favor and favor, it just wasn't registering. This, this is way, way better for a child like him. So this is great. Really, it's really been great. So, love hearing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love hearing that. that you know, you're you're actually answering some of the questions that I prepared. So, question number one. Okay. Question one. Inside the pages of Occupational Octus Piano, is there a new language of music? I believe there is. Absolutely. I mean, I've seen it firsthand. I think it is totally a new language, and I think it was done very, very well. And it was, you know. I mean, it's one thing to go on Amazon and buy the book. It's another thing to work with you and have the whole method come alive through, you know, your your points that you give me as I go. And no, I think it's wonderful. I definitely think it's a new language for sure. Great, great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, is this approach uniquely user friendly? Very user friendly. Um, <clears throat> With my two students that are using this particular approach, um, what really was great was they both had access to an electronic keyboard and we were able to put, instead of, we, we never wrote on, I know like sometimes it says to write on the keys. We never wrote on the keys, like we used um, stickers to put on the keys for both pianos. And um, I think that they did just really fantastic with getting the piano ready. Uh, like, like with Evan, he he needed an extra visual to, the, up close and personal to understand how to put the rings on. But like once everything is set up with you know the the letters on the piano, the rings, it's like the the method is just so user friendly. It's so easy to play these songs and have success very quickly. Well, now I'm going to just slightly deviate from my own questions. Um, if I, I'd love to insert a word into your sentence. It's for him to independently play. <clears throat> it's, not, it's not only that he's playing, because playing could be what happens in many traditional lessons, let alone adaptive lessons, where a book is open in front of the student and the student is looking at the book and they are playing the notes, but in reality, the teacher has corrected or displayed the pattern enough times that the student has memorized the pattern right. and you're watching somebody play something that has been memorized. Right. This, <clears throat> pardon me, the question would then be, is Evan engaged in independent instructional acquisition and performance? Yes, absolutely. And I think, I just think by the nature of how the, the visuals appear, the boxes are done really well. They're very, really nice. They're large. They're, the colors are really good. And um, I love the fact that the arrows tell you to hold a note. I mean, it, it's just very easily understood. Um, I love what you did with teaching the accidentals by having the black dot to the left of the note or to the right of the note. That's easy to understand. 
Um, because believe me, I, I tried lots of different ways to teach those concepts and I never did anything in a square with a dot. It's just really um, very concise and it looks very good on the page. And I think that he, as he got more confidence, you know, he's excited to play. And like you just heard the mother say that there are times where he goes to the piano on his own and he opens up the book. And so the book then, the way it's designed makes it user friendly for a child to be independent. That, that that's what you were getting at. I yes, of course, of course. Yeah. It's you know when when something works well, you can get answers at multiple levels, and yeah. I love that you're giving the answers at multiple levels. It's great. I, I don't think I heard feedback from mom before this method that he was really anxious to go and play on his own. So that part makes me really happy to hear that. Because I think wonderful. Me too. Yeah, me too. I think before, like when I was trying to adapt things from Faber and Faber with color codes and so on, um, it, it would take place within the context of the lesson. A lot of input for me, maybe way too much talking for me. Um, and now he can do this independently. And that's that's the goal we're after is independence. So I think that this is the best method I've seen for children and young adults like this to encourage independence. Really good. Wonderful. Thanks. Great answer. Great, great answer. Uh, it, you know, the next question similarly lines up with your answer. Actually, the question was going to be, do you believe people of almost any age with basic color and letter matching skills will be able to read and succeed with this program? Oh, absolutely. And I think your untapped market for this are people who are seniors, uh, people, mm -hmm. people that might be in memory care, all, all of that stuff, because people um, and, you know, some of the older adults in different facilities and things like that would probably would be able to do this really nicely and have a lot of success with it. And the melodies are, you know, like what I'm seeing so far, they're melodies that they'll know, like there's Brahms lullaby, you know, things minuet and G. I think they would be just tickled to be able to play this. And I think, you know, families would be just overjoyed to see something like this go on. So, yeah, I think it has a lot of I think you've got a lot of possibilities for this method. Yes, yes. Uh, this is my favorite thing to be overwhelmed with, the, <laughs> the amount of possibility. Yeah. I tell people all the time I could walk into a nursery school, I could walk into an assisted living center, and I could walk into a bar full of inebriated people, and everybody could have success with the program. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and I, so, I, I think in terms of like um, adolescents that might have like ADHD, things like that, that would be a really good method mm -hmm. for them. Um, a lot of times it's worked. Yeah, a lot of times music therapists like at the adolescent level focus a lot on guitar and drums and things like this. But I think with this method, you could get kids, you know, to play this, especially like I know you have things like Billy Joel as it gets, you know, things that they can relate to. Um, you might not even have thought about this, but you've been teaching proper timing without even having time signature there. Right, 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 right. It's not, it's not there, it doesn't exist. There is no time signature when using occupational octaves. Right. There are only proportions, meaning no matter what song you're playing, anywhere in, in the world, in the entire history of all of music, whatever note you're on, the next note is held for either the same amount of time or a very specific Ra uh, ratio longer or shorter right. so through the arrows we could always always create those ratios right Had, did you watch the quality of less of evan's lessons improve the more we focused on the non-musical goal absolutely absolutely right. like once once he understood that green d you know that those positions the positioning yeah yeah positioning and well let's just uh, i'll interrupt for one second just for people that might be watching this interview at some point when we say green d green b what we're actually saying is two thumbs on c right which is a position that so many books start with but we have found more success by telling the students where the pointer fingers should go as opposed to where the thumbs should go right. because sharing the middle c is a bit uncomfortable and if you're focused on the uncomfortable thing versus the comfortable thing, you're going to have a uh, less of a chance of success. Right. And that was great because he had a lot of issues with his thumbs and so he, and not his pointer fingers. He could find that right away. And as time went on, it just became automatic for him, which was wonderful to see. Muscle memory. Right. And that's part, that's part of flow autonomy. Have you ever used a program that successfully seeks simultaneous musical and non-musical goals at the level of occupational octaves. 
I think I think there are programs like that out there, but they they are for different kinds of kids. Like for this particular child that we've been working on, and some of the kids with special needs, this occupational octaves addresses their needs so much better than anything I've seen before. But I mean, there's other methods out there. I mean, when 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 you're saying did something that I use anything in the past that address those kinds of needs. Yes, for a certain child, like Faber and Faber could address both of those needs that you're saying, but for particularly children that have learning issues, motor planning issues, and attention issues, this method is far superior to anything I've seen before. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay, with Evan, would it be possible to focus on the same non-musical goals if we were using a traditional note program? No. I'd okay. Be. Why? Well, be, because the, the way this program is set up, it's just, okay, so a lot of children on the autism spectrum, their strongest suit is their visual, their, their ability to look and see things. They're very visually oriented. And this is done within the boxes, the structure of the boxes, the colors and the letters that are done. There's nothing out there that I think keeps their attention span the, quite the same way. And what's so amazing, which I did not realize because you know when I was doing this on my own, I was doing like the level one. And as you move up to level one, two and three, and you start introducing the lowercase letters and then the chord structure and everything else. It just, if the child like learns, like if they do a good job learning everything they need to learn in, in the first book, it just creeps up sequentially so nicely, not too fast, not too slow, that the child is like excited and then boom, they're playing chords. And like, who would have thought that a child like this with all these motor planning issues and attention issues is so excited to land on that chord, that final chord of the piece. And like, I, th I just think that you did, you must have done your homework because I feel like um, when, as the books progress, they're just done very well. Like I'm, I'm like, I'm kind of looking through book one as we're talking and you know, for a long time, it's just a lot of melody lines. I'm kind of looking, but then, you know, like around 20, page 22, we've got Jing or 21. Jingle Bell starts having chords, and then you kind of back off and you're back to melody again, and then the chords come back in. It's just a really nicely done combination of things to get the child to move ahead. And then like when you, okay, so here's an example. Like when you get to this old man, all of a sudden we're gonna be playing like a G sharp, which is you know really fabulous for the kids to be able to understand what sharps and flats are. And it's just, you know, wonderful. Oh, look at this little grid. I like that. Ah. So this is this is this is a little view into the future for you over here of, uh -huh. of using this program. Yeah. This is exactly how the keyboard evolves. So it's a little tough to see, but what I'll do is this. I'll shrink it down for a second. You got here's book one. Right. Here's book two where we are at right now mm -hmm. <clears throat> and now book three is going to really whoops we'll start to really expand things a lot mm -hmm. and you could see we're really really covering things here right. this high this e with the purple check is the um the e on the top that the um the descending chromatic scale in fury Lee starts on that you watch brendan play right. that's that letter all the way up there right okay so this is this is part of what you're saying. Yes, I do. Uh, I do. I do creep along very, very gently with everything that we do. Right. It's like you learn how to do a couple different pieces, put it together in the hardest way it could be put together, and then learn something new in a simple way, and right. then build all those pieces back together. Right. I like I like it like a challenge. Then back off, ease up a little bit, give them a little bit more confidence. Then do the next challenge instead of boom, boom, exactly. boom, boom. boom. That happens in a lot of other method books, like, wow, we're like learning a one chord that we're learning a four chord, like it happens so quickly. And this is just really paced really nicely. And like I said, I can't, I can't underscore how much I like this visually for these kids. I think this is just really nice. And I know for a fact, because I've done it so many times myself, 
so many music therapists don't know how to find anything like this and so they make their own color coded things out of like colored stickers and you know spend you spend hours like i came up kind of with my own system and i have a lot of things like on file folders with stickers and so on but it, you know after a while it gets really old to like keep creating new things like this and this is already thought up so nicely it's you know in a nice book form and like now you say it's available you know on the ipad which is you know a wonderful thing for the future the pdfs so. are great to work with okay lisa i know you have to go in a few minutes i just want to work through a little bit more of these questions here because okay. i like i said i have lead-in questions to make me look awesome here i gotta get okay. through them okay okay so so uh, i'm so glad that you gave me that broad answer to the question but just to go back to that question for a second was with <clears throat> with our, our buddy would he be able to seek out these non-musical goals if we were learning with traditional music notes? And you said no, and you gave me a bunch of reasons as to why, but there's actually one word that can break down everything you were trying to say just now. Well, no, not everything you were trying to say, break down the core that I look to. And the word is expertise. Okay. With occupational octaves and with the rings on the fingers, what Evan gets to do that's the same as you and I is with just a second, you look at a note, you and I, we could look at a note and know what finger to use, how long to hold it for, and exactly what to push down. Right. That's the most basic level of expertise you could have with reading music. And right. through occupational octaves, Evan has that. Right. He has expertise in this language of music. Right. <clears throat> and it's really the expertise that gives you the ability to say, okay, I don't have to worry about the notes. I don't really have to worry about the fingers. I don't really have to worry about the beats. I could really look into this as non-musical goals now. If he's making a mistake, is it because he didn't keep his hand stable? Okay. Oh, if that's the case, let's work on hand stabilization and okay. so on. Okay, now, next question is, did his expertise unlock greater levels of concentration? Yes, I believe so. And the reason, so once he got comfortable with positioning and so on, something that's a challenge for him is to keep his eyes on the music and follow sequentially. And you've seen it a few times where he'll be playing along and then all of a sudden he'll lose his spot, like his eye will move down or whatever. And I feel like by having these underlying things already there, like the rings, the letters and the boxes and so on, I feel like he's improved because what I saw earlier on before this is his attention span and his eyes were like all over the place. And he sometimes gets off and he can get himself back on because he's more comfortable. And he already has, like you said, that that feeling of expertise. So yes, I think I think it's really good. So, the, so we're in agreement that the expertise unlocks concentration. Yes. Does now, do you think that the combination of expertise and concentration, when those two are working together, would you say, would you say it's fair to say that they unlock positive and expressive emotion? Yes, because, oh my okay. God, yes, totally. Look how many times when he would get to the end of a song and he knew he nailed it and he was smiling from ear to ear and feeling so confident. I mean, that that's what this is all about is helping kids feel good about themselves. I also think though, by I think he really has enjoyed having you on. And I think that you have a really nice combination of keeping him engaged and giving him feedback, but you don't do it in a way that's punitive or anything. Like you make it fun. And when, when he does something really good, you know, you get you give him wonderful praise in not a phony way, like a really caring, authentic way. And um, I just, Think he soared with this and i'm i'm just really can't wait to see what he's going to do like later in the summer till next year and I, and I and i mean he's so wonderful like when he would put his voicing on i love how he says i'm there and mm -hmm. if he was mm -hmm. making a mistake he'll say oh no i wait and, and he'll fix it himself like he just has a lot of confidence about it i think it's just been a really good little journey for him and i um i'm really appreciative of you you know spending the time with him it's been great Thanks. So Lisa, let me just ask you um, one, if I can get, if I can get them in quickly, let's try to get them in. Okay. <clears throat> what did you think occupational office was before? And what do you think it is now? Okay. I think initially, like when I stumbled upon it, it's hard to remember when it, it seems like I've known this now a long time, but um, you know, I was looking for something, I was frustrated and I saw it for the first time. I'm like, whoa, look at these pieces. They're all notated. They're like, you know, pieces that kids will know with some really, you know, great classics in them. 
and I was really excited to try them. I was a little, to be honest, a little reticent at first about the rings because I thought the rings will get lost, the rings will get, you know, chewed on or whatever they would, and it's not the case at all. Like he has, um, both of my students that use the rings take the rings really seriously. They put them on kind of like really ceremoniously and they take them off nicely and they put them away. Like they really respect the rings. And um, now after having been mentored by you, you just made the whole thing um, come alive at a deeper level because I wasn't really focused at all. I had no, um, like when I first looked at it, I didn't think, oh, what kind of positioning is this? Like that was not anywhere in my consciousness to think about telling the child that there's a position that you should like put your fingers at to, you know, get the C's to be in, in line. Um, also just, um, getting feedback from you on what to say, because I tend to be like, I talk too much. I realize that I, that's just a thing in my life. Yeah, I, but you, but you've had a job of explaining complicated things to people that may have a tough time understanding complicated things. And you have a very soft and professional tone that is very nurturing. And that's exactly who you're supposed to be in most situations right but now we also have a lingo that could just take three four sentences and shrink right. it down in five six words right. and i was and it, oh i know the other thing i was like really hung up on left and right like <laughs> because that's mm -hmm. so much part of traditional piano is getting to kids to understand like traditional piano oh when the stem is down it's your left hand when the stem is up usually it's the right hand and then, you know, doing a lot of left and right stuff. But this, it's not necessary to focus on left and right. It's not necessary. But the reason why it's not necessary is because there's something else that does require the focus. Right. And the focus that you're taking off of worrying about right and left is now going on to, in reality, hand stabilization and finger isolation, but in more of a layman's term. Every finger is on top of the right note already. All right. And the challenge to learn to just not move right. is so extraordinary in terms of functionally, in terms of actually being successful with it versus the concept of it. Right. And where he really was able to improve, you could forget about right hand and left hand if you develop the self-control to say, I, I feel every bone in my body is telling me, every single instinct is telling me, move your hand to play this next note. Right. But I got this teacher over here and I know he's going to make a crazy sound if I move my hands. So okay. I'm just going to keep it over here. And then student looks up, sees blue E, looks down, sees they already have a blue finger on the E, pushes down. And then we have things as efficient as they could possibly be. Yeah, that's good. I like how you And that's the real goal there. Mm -hmm. And like I've said to you a couple of times, it's like there's a million different places you could work on right hand and left hand. Mm -hmm. Ironically, <laughs> you don't need to do it at the piano. Right. And that's Who would have thought? What a relief. <laughs> right. <laughs> um